Hi, and welcome back to the Rakana 2.0 launch. We're using a digital medium, the Cube, to launch a digital company, Rakana's new product. Uh, I'm here with over Omer Tryman, CEO of Rakana. Omer? Great to be here, this is exciting. And I'm Peter Burris, and I'm the Chief Research Officer of SiliconANGLE Wikibon. And what we're doing is we're talking about uh, the business problems of digital business, specifically how data and operations are going to evolve and how companies like Rakana are providing tooling that makes that possible. So let's dig a little bit more into this notion of business value, where we're eventually we're going to get to uh, understanding how what companies can do almost in sequence to start to retool their operations from the IT or the data up. So let's start here, because uh, we were talking in between the break. At the end of the day, one of the reasons why we're driving this digital business notion is not because the technology is cool or because the Harvard Business Review writes about it. We're driving it because customers want digital engagement. Customers want to be able to buy things on their phones. They want to be able to take their phones and their information into stores, into retail outlets. They want digital engagement because it puts them more in charge. Absolutely, and customers uh, not only want digital engagement for the sake of digital inconvenience, um, they want it because it helps them identify, and, and marketers want it, it helps them identify with the business as a single unit. You go shopping or you interact as a business with another organization, that's one business. It's not a bunch of silos, it's not a bunch of departments. Uh, you expect a uniform interaction when something goes wrong and you kind of peel back the layers of the onion and look at the You being the customer in this Right, sense. right, when something goes, uh, sorry, something goes wrong for you as a customer and, and if, you, if you could, uh, you know, sort of uh, look under the covers and see what's actually happening, you find dozens of organizations all scrambling, right? It's a fire drill every time I click reload and the page doesn't refresh. I go to checkout and the shopping cart doesn't work. I try to make a delivery and uh, it gets routed, you know, the truck gets routed to the wrong location. Right under the covers, you have a bunch of different folks in operations now, largely IT operations because everything's digital, right? Um, and they're scrambling, right? Uh, what happened? Where did it happen? Who has the data? Who got? Tr who kept track of? Whose fault was it? Right? Lots of finger pointing. That's the state of the world today. Well, and st st they're still scrambling in the business, as we said in the in the previous section. They're saying, you know, giddy up, giddy up. The business people are saying, I need it now. I need it now. I have a customer that requires response as the IT organization is scrambling. So let's tie that back to the role that data is playing within operations. How do you foresee data as an asset evolving within business and therefore having an impact on how IT op, the mission yeah. of IT uh, and the makeup of IT is likely to evolve? So we, we think of this as a crawl walk run, right? And uh, people are actually taking advantage of data today. It's in pockets, the digital natives, right? The sort of Google, Facebook, Amazon of the world, they do this very well. Most companies are just starting to learn how to do it. And uh, what they're realizing is that data can help them understand how the business is operating. If you take those 40 different silos within IT and they're all just, look, step one, look at the same data. Right? Let's have an operational view of what happened end to end so we can all play from the same playbook. Right? Uh, then we can solve the problems faster, we reduce the firefights, uh, we can start introducing automation when we see together the same problems over and over again. We can start introducing ways that will reduce the burden from manually stitching together and running these systems. So the crawl is, let's just get the IT house in order and data is the key to that. Right? In fact, lack of data is what's caused it. So let's talk about the things that have to happen from that crawl standpoint. One is you have to be able to put the, the appropriate instrumentation inside applications and inside some of these systems, right? You do, and what's interesting is that most of it's there. Right? If you do a survey across an organization, uh, people have over the past decade or so been educated to instrumenting, to logging, right? The systems do it today. All the gear you buy from vendors does it. Uh, you know, this whole DevOps movement is largely educating developers at a minimum, log something, ideally generate metrics, right? Uh, tell the other parts of the system what's going on so I don't have to go back and do, you know, Java bytecode instrumentation to understand what's happening, just build it in first class. Um, and you have the tooling that can take older applications and start extracting what's happening. So the data is actually getting generated but then it falls on the floor. Right, so now we need a warehouse where we can put the data and we have some 
understanding of how that data is structured. Exactly. We think of it as the central nervous system, right? It actually ties everything together. We talked about this in the first segment. Is uh, if you like the body analogy, right? If you had uh, separate parts of the body, each kind of reacting immediately to their own local sensory input, you would not be able to crawl you'd not be able to walk and run, of course, right? So once you have a central nervous system, you can actually do coordinated steps. Um, and when you have that data in real time, as we introduced with Rokana 2.0, um, you can actually uh, change the nature of the business. You have a first responder experience, so you can look at what just happened and what happened elsewhere or in the, in the organization. Um, and you can start introducing some of these agile IT technologies the PaaS systems like Cloud Foundry, like uh, uh, private clouds like OpenStack and, and public clouds to allow the business to move faster. So I want to come back to this notion of first responder system, but the third thing I think we need to do is, uh, let me run something by you. Many years ago, because uh, I've, been, I've been working with large IT organizations, providing consulting and advisory services for a long time now, and I'd sit in a meeting with a group of people and if there was a problem, um, you could almost predict that the problem was caused by the individual who said, well, yeah, I just made a change, but it couldn't possibly be right. my system that caused the problem. Right. It's like, oh, <laughs> that's the guy. That's the guy that messed up, or yeah. that's the guy that messed us all up. So I think the third thing is that we need to utilize the instrumentation, bring the data in a place where we actually can have visibility on it, but thirdly, we have to get the IT organization to themselves be data-driven, right. which is not necessarily an easy thing in a world where finger pointing is the routine and everybody's trying to protect themselves. Right. Talk about that a little bit. So the state of the world is actually slightly more complex. It's not often the last change, it's that change was a response to another change, was a response to another change, a response to the original change sure. that actually caused the problem, which may have been months ago. Right? And so unless IT starts saying, okay, we want to look at what were all the things that happened along the way, what's the um, uh, data evidence tell us, right? Security, I think, is starting to, to get this and operations kind of falling suit behind them. What's the trail of evidence in the form of data and events that's leading us to, oh yeah, this is where it started. This is the cascade, right? It's almost like, um, you know, and Eric might talk about this uh, later, uh, it's like a crime map. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. uh, there was there was an incident. And you're doing yeah. you're doing forensics, yeah. um, and so we've basically uh, captured that experience in software in a way that you can do it at scale, Fortune 100 global scale, multi data center, multi cloud, uh, as a drop in product. Right, and so yes, there are still uh, requirements to help IT understand how to use the data. Um, we believe step one is don't assume IT is full of data scientists waiting for stuff to analyze. They've got jobs to do right now. Um, introduce tooling that makes it obvious to them what's actually going on. That's been the founding philosophy behind uh, everything we build at Rokana. So give them what they need to be data driven. Don't ask them to learn the mechanics of right. data driven. Right, they right. don't have the time. Uh, they've got, you know. So now we're crawling. Different. Now we're crawling. So let's talk about walk. Once right. we've got we're taking advantage of the instrumentation, we got the data, and we've got tooling for people so that they can change their behavior. Now we want to walk. What's the next what set of things we need to what do? What we see happening next is once uh, IT starts to realize that data is actually the underlying uh, sort of uh, source that is illuminating what actually happened. They now have access to more, the machines are doing a lot more, the number crunching for them. Um, they start thinking about how do we introduce some of our expertise and logic into the system. If we've got that one guy we always call to solve this one problem, if we can capture how that person goes about solving that problem and start introducing it from an automation fashion, um, that actually is going to free us up to start doing what we really want to start doing uh, is looking at where this data is telling us the business is going. Start doing more planning, start anticipating more. So now we're building new capabilities into the system and we need to run. Exactly. Running, uh, which may sound a little futuristic, I think, certainly in the, For the Fortune bulk of 500. Companies. But there <laughs> are certainly some customers. companies that are doing it today. Absolutely. Uh, running is where we see IT taking the data, right? And remember, uh, there's a handful of events that are the transaction. There's maybe one or two order of magnitude more that is sort of the user behavior around it. And then there's thousands or tens of thousands of events that are actually uh, happening within the system. IT is sitting on a treasure trove of data. They know what's happening to the business before the business knows what's happening to the business, before the customer knows what's happening. And so or getting- Or they can know. 
Uh, what's happening yes, to the business yes. before the business yes, knows yes, what's no, happening yes, to the business. Yes, they have the potential. The data Correct. is there. It's right? the potential. So taking that and being able to say, we see that, let, let me to give a, a really concrete and, and possibly incredibly boring example that's very impactful, right? We see that um, point of sale systems have this kind of error rate, this kind of transaction rate. You know, the crawl is, let's just make sure that we uh, resolve point of sale system issues before the store calls us up and says we're out of service, right? Um, the walk is, let's make sure that we optimize the process so that we're doing the updates at low peak times, we're doing them at night, we've given ourselves enough runway, um, we actually avoid the problems to begin with, IT is more efficient. The run is, when I look at the flow of data from a particular store and I compare it to what was happening a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, and to what's happening in the other stores, and I see three cash registers online instead of the typical four, and the dollar volume in that store is down, right, and it's not an operational issue, then the business is losing money because someone called in sick, because the cash register isn't open. That's a revenue opportunity right there. And you can start extending that to the mobile experience, the web experience. IT has access to all of that data and they see it as it's happening. And not only does it take revenue offline right now, it also agitates a customer, which means it takes revenue offline in the future. Exactly. Okay, now, so we have now talked about the business problems here at the Rakana 2.0 launch. I'm speaking with Omer Triman. And next we're going to bring up Eric Sammers to talk about how the underlying technology of many of the things that we're talking about are going to work. So you're on the Cube, stay with us for a few minutes, and let's get into some of the technologies that are going to make this vision real.